That's right. We're on live. We're going to get this thing done one way or another. What's up to y'all? And I guess the roots of my uh, work ethic started back when I was real young. My dad uh, was self-employed, and so was my mother. And 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 I would I remember as a child going on work sites and visits and things like that with them. And uh, my mother was a hairdresser, and I was I was her helper. I helped her sweep the floor and you know pick up the magazines and load the coke machine and that kind of thing and um and then i, I went to my first paid job i worked for my brother he was also self-employed and um and i went to college well i went to um i started out at school for the blind and i went there until about the ninth grade and i switched to public school at that point because i really felt like i was missing some social skills, social interaction. And so I switched to the public school in my hometown and I graduated from there. And then I went on to a four year college, uh, Arkansas State University and graduated from there with a degree in social work. And then, then I came home and I went to work for the Department of Human Services. I was a, a food stamp worker and determined eligibility for food stamps. Did lots of interviewing and um, going through materials, paperwork, verification items, and then referring to my manual or, or, or my knowledge of manual material to determine eligibility. And I did that for about nine years. And, um, you know, I've got horror stories of supervisors uh, not respecting my wishes and, you know, as far as a visually impaired person and my needs. So I was on, I was on the job for, for three days and I went to my supervisor and I said, I can't, I'm, I need something, some kind of technology to help me with this. And I have had services for service from services for the blind who helped, they helped me a lot financially, but probably not as much in the field of visual aids and um, technology to help me prepare for college and I mean for work and so well for college too but anyway <laughs> um, so they asked me my supervisor and her and her supervisor my director they asked me to go home and think about resigning because mm. I can see the work and I told them, I said, well, you know, there's there's technology out there. There's a closed circuit television that you can put your your work under to see the the manual. Mm -hmm. And you know, they they downtrod anything I said, you know, they would say, Oh, a manual wouldn't fit under there. And mm -hmm. well just go home and think about it. And thirty minutes later my supervisor came to my house and um with pen and paper in her head and asked me to sign a resignation letter. Mm. And I was so distraught. I'm, that was the, probably the only time in my life that I ever was just so, I mean, I was, I was at my lowest point that a person could ever be, you know. So what happened next after that? Well, 30 days later, I was reinstated by the director or the uh, commissioner of the Department of Human Services and my rehabilitation counselor bless his heart he brought me a a dinosaur of a cctv but it it worked and um and and i was able to kind of get on track they they tried to do they thought they were helping me out after that by providing me one-on-one -on -one training mm -hmm. but i had trouble getting it and and i finally went to them and I was being written up and I was on probation and thought I was gonna lose my job and everything. And I said, look, why can't I just go to training just like everybody else did? Mm -hmm. You know, everybody else has had an opportunity. Why can't I get that opportunity? And I said, if I fail, I fail. 
Mm-hmm. But right now I'm failing and and I think that I can comprehend better if I just go through the training like everybody else. Mm-hmm. Well, I did and the light bulb came on and and I did just fine after that. Okay. So that's, that's good. And um, that that's that's an uh you know that, that's an inspiring story because though people may that, like you said earlier people you didn't want to really talk about it because you probably thought you know you, people hear this it's like well i want to quit but no you know if you if you make you make a way and show them that you are capable and what have you and don't and, per, and be persistent about it look what happened so that's that was that was a good thing so um moving forward <clears throat> what we were talking about um one of the horrors it was that one of the horror stories that you were talking about yes yes okay so um after uh, how long did you how long did, how long did you, did you work before you did you retire or, or after mm-hmm. okay. I worked for I worked for Department of Human Services for nine years, and I, I my dream job has always been working with Division of Services for the Blind because I wanted to help people the way my counselor helped me because if it had not been for him at that critical point in my life, I wouldn't have been able to do the job so. That that was always my secret main goal, and that I told myself that that's what I wanted to do, and so I went to work. And I knew the only way that I could do that in state government um, was to climb the ladder. Uh, you start out at, at you have these grade systems, so I was like a grade fifteen. I needed to go way up to a grade nineteen to be a rehabilitation counselor, mm-hmm. and I knew that that was it's too big of a jump to take, so. I, I moved up to another level job, a higher level job, where I was a uh, child support enforcement investigator. Mm-hmm. And I did that for about four years, maybe five. And, um, and you know, that's a whole nother story. That was just a blur. I'm glad that part of my life is over. Okay. Because I was, you know, it was a good, it was a good job. You know, someone's got to do it, but. I'm not cut out for that, and I did so that for five days. I understand that, but it wasn't nothing that had to do with you, your vision, or anything like that, right? Because I want you have to go into the, the, uh, the details. Not really, but actually, that was when I realized during that time was when I realized that my vision was getting worse because okay. I really noticed that I was having trouble seeing things and doing things. And when I went to the school for the blind, I learned braille, and and another light bulb came on one day when I was at work at child support, probably while I was bending over uh, doing a half somersault trying to see the file names on the files in my drawers. Mm. And I realized, hey, I know Braille. So I had to reintroduce myself to Braille. And I, I started out with just a slate and stylus and, <clears> and then relearned. Yeah. But they come in handy when you really got to have something. Right, right. And uh, and then I eventually bought a braille writer, and I started labeling like crazy, and kind of getting back in the in the involved with the blindness community. And you know, it was you know there I knew I really wanted to work for Division of Services for the Blind. And um, so after I waited for an opportunity when there was a job opening, and I felt I was ready. And um, as luck would have it, I guess it was luck or eight, maybe. Um, my supervisor that interviewed me was my former counselor. And I got the job. And I worked there for 14 years in the capacity of a rehabilitation counselor. And I was also a rehabilitation teacher. And I was a supervisor. And um, during that time, Probably about seven years of during that time, I was the coordinator of the Jumpstart program, which is a youth summer employment program. I retired after 28 and a half years and came home. And I'm glad I did because, you know, uh, the blood pressure was just skyrocketed because of pain and everything. So I, I, you know, came home and I've done some contract work on the side, you know, helping counselors with assessments and evaluation, um, you know, and training. That's, I really love to, to do the assessment and evaluation type stuff. What was your motivation? Well, I, I think a lot of that has to do with what you learn. And uh, starting out early, I was always doing things. Um, 
running just as fast as I could go, playing with the neighbors and, um, you know, things like that. And I really never, I don't want to say I didn't consider myself disabled because I knew I was, Mm -hmm. but I didn't, I guess I didn't understand what the limits of someone who is disabled could place on themselves. And I never, and I never did allow myself to place those limitations that would say, you can't play with those kids because you don't see well.